some new faces and some new missionaries and to get a burden that uh, I, I like when people pour gasoline on that fire. Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I like being in a missions conference where I can sit in a pew and the Lord, I say, Lord, I'll go. And the Lord says, shut up, you're too old. And, you know, and I say, but I'll go because I'm, I'm, my heart is touched. And that's a good thing. And so let me encourage you as a church that if God calls you to go, go. Go. You, you can go from right here where you're at and go halfway around the world and do something for God. And if he doesn't call you to go, then help folks get where they're going. Uh, we have a young couple in our church. I was just thinking while they were singing that song there a minute ago that... Uh, Went off to Bible college, came back, thought they were called to the mission field, said that's where we want to go. Uh, they started off on deputation. You know, that's just traveling from one coast to the other, trying to raise a little money to get where they're going. And uh, somewhere in Colorado, in the midst of all of that uh, uh, back and forth travel, uh, they were sideswiped by a semi truck, knocked off the side of a mountain, and broke her neck. And uh, when they finally got back to Toledo, she's in one of those halos that she wore it everywhere she went, stuck up like this and held her head screws in her head. And, uh, you know, you look at that and you think, well, you gave it your best shot. You know, that's about all you can say sometimes. But the Lord had other plans. Yeah, and uh, she got out of that and recuperated. And they were a little behind on their time schedule, but they raised their support, went off to Scotland. And uh, if you got time to go look on YouTube, you'll find that when uh, Charles became king of England, that one of the Scottish rites was to present the King of England with a handmade sword. And I'm talking 14 karat gold and pure silver and all the trimmings with that. And they chose five uh, masters, cra master craftsmen to develop that sword. And you go online, you can see them present that sword to King Charles. And uh, as they do, and he comes down and shakes the hand with those five men, one of them steps out, shakes the king's hand, and hands him a piece of paper. That's that missionary that went off to Scotland and he gave the King of England a gospel track on what it means to be a Christian. You never know. You just never know. So let me encourage you, get involved in missions. And first, give yourself. That's the key with them folks. They first gave themselves. And so, uh, boy, before this meeting's over, I mean, it's not long, it's gonna be over here in a few minutes. But maybe good for you just to kneel somewhere and say, God, I just want you to know I don't fit the bill. I'm probably not qualified. Uh, maybe I'm too old or maybe I'm not old enough. But, Lord, I just want you to know, if you've got some place that you need me to go, I'm willing to go. Yeah, that's good. I'm willing to go. And you say, well, that scares me to death. Well, someday it may scare you even worse to realize what you could have accomplished for the Lord and then failed to do. Right. Turn in your Bibles, if you will. I want you to go over to Mark chapter 15. These are familiar passages, and I, I just want to end up by trying to encourage you about the possibilities where you are right here in your town. We've had these gentlemen and their wives in some cases and come by and present us with their burden for mission fields and our hearts have been stirred as we think about the need and not only the need but the possibility. And maybe this is your third or your fourth or your fifth or I, I don't know how many missions conferences. I remember just as a young man being in a missions conference and telling the Lord, Lord, I'd go, but you're coming. So there's no point. I didn't know I was going to pastor and retire, but I, that was not beside the point at that point. It was not have enough time. And you say, well, you know, I'm too old or I, I'm just not going to be able to make You have no idea what God yeah. can do with you. All he needs, he doesn't need talent, he doesn't need longevity, he just needs somebody that's willing to be used. If he can feed 5,000 men plus women and children with five loaves and two fishes, he can probably take some of us loafers and use us somewhere to reach the world with the gospel. The question is, are you willing to do it if he calls? Now, I've had people tell me, I have plans for my life, preacher. I couldn't do that. Well, I just want you to know something. Your plans will never equal what God has in store for you if you just follow his plan down the road. He might rescue you from your plans. He might rescue you from your career aspirations. He might rescue you from reaching that high level of academia and take you off around the world to somewhere that I call Bula Bula Land. And wherever it is, when, when life runs down to the last wire, you'll be thankful to God that you didn't follow your dreams 
but you followed his will. Over in the book of Mark 6, 16, you just listen if you want because you know these verses. Verse number 15, and he saith unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Matthew chapter 28, 19, he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Missions does not stop till we get to the end yeah. of the world. He said in Colossians chapter 1, verse 23, If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. I read that verse to you the other night. It's important because the Lord told his disciples, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The apostle Paul said they did their job. Those poor, ignorant fishermen without even the advantage of a bicycle, mm. yeah. Yeah. got the gospel, not just to their area, to every creature. Yeah. Right. I want you to know, some of them folks that went down into Africa uh, 50 years ago or 75 years ago or 100 years ago, they were not the first. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Those fellows that blazed the trails back into the Amazon jungles or on the river there and reached those people that had never seen, they were not the first. According to the scripture, they preached to the gospel to every creature, which is what he commanded them to do. We're on our second or third go-around. Just let me help you with that. Yeah, right. We're not in the beginning of this game. We're in the ninth inning. Yeah, right. On the ninth inning. And still is good to hit a home run even yeah, in the ninth yeah, inning, right. isn't it? So that's what we ought to be doing. We ought to be swinging for the fences and saying, God, here am I. And I, you say, well, what are you going to do if he doesn't come back? Well, then let's reach the world again. Yeah. Let's reach it again and leave it to that next generation to reach their world again. Yeah. But let's not give up. Let's not fall in line with all of the naysayers and say, well, the Lord's coming and be the first generation to fail to reach their world with the gospel. Let's not do that. How about that? I want to talk to you just a little bit, and it, again, it's, it's just probably just review. Is that all right? Yeah, amen. Because I want us to think a little bit tonight about what we need to be doing to stay faithful, to meet the end of the trail, to be a, an advantage to our church, to be appreciative of our church, of the things that we take everything for granted, I fear. We live in such a busy world. We have so many aspirations and hopes and possibilities We've got this we can do. We've got you young people. Listen, the, the world has become a hundred times larger for you than it was for my father and my mother. There's more to accomplish, more that can be done. The idea, listen, even the idea when I was in high school of graduating from college was not something everybody was going to do. Yeah. Uh, I came up in the midst of the Vietnam War, and most of my friends went off to fight and die in Vietnam. And that, that wasn't the idea, let's go to college. As a matter of fact, if they went to college, it was so they didn't have to go fight in the Vietnam War for the most part. But things change and times alter and you've got an opportunity now to, to accomplish something with your life, to do something. And, and I, I want you to understand, God doesn't call every young man and every young lady to go into the ministry. Right, right. Uh, sometimes I've had people say, well, you know, I, I'm not in the ministry. You know, I, I'm, I'm just a mechanic. Listen, there's, nothing, there's no such thing as just a mechanic. That's right. If God's called you to do what you're doing, you are serving the Lord God himself. You're accomplishing his work, and you ought to be thankful for the place God put you, the things he's given you to do. We ought to recognize that uh, there's not one of these missionaries going to make it if somebody doesn't work an hourly job or somebody doesn't collect a salary and sacrificially take money they don't have to and put it in a pan and then get on their knees and pray and somehow hold the ropes so that the work can be done. Everybody ought to be involved in missions and ready to serve the Lord. It's difficult sometimes to keep that perspective. We need to be cautious. We need to write notes to self. You ever write notes to self? Uh, you just tie strings around your finger, you know, and then I forgot what they were there for. And, uh, you know, my mind is now, it's, I'm about I'm down to just the engine and the caboose now. 
and not a whole lot in between, and, and I'm, I'm struggling to get that thing on into the station there. But you, you remember when, when you used to have all these dreams and aspirations and all these things you wanted to accomplish, and as you go through life, isn't life just about finding the priorities for today and the priorities for this week and priorities for this month? And somewhere along the line, you don't throw your dreams away, and you don't throw your aspirations away necessarily, but you realize, just not now, I have things I have to accomplish. Accomplish. And I think we ought to put the Lord right in that buggy right there. Now, there are things I'd like to do yet as an old guy. There are things I'd like to see my kids do and my kids accomplish. There are places I'd like to go, like to see. But those things are all a reality because I just need to serve the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, right. And if some of those things come to fruition, then hallelujah. Yeah, right. If they don't, it really is not going to matter at this point because I've got a bucket full of things that God's done for me that keep me shouting for the rest of eternity. Don't think that somehow I have to trade what I would like to see my life become in order to be what God wants me to be. That's the mistake the devil throws to young people. Now, you may not become what you want to become. Okay? I'm not here to tell you whatever you want to become, God's in it. Maybe he's not. But I will tell you this, that if he's not in what you want to become with your life, young people, and if he does move you over to another place that you never thought you'd be and you never wanted to be, and, oh, well, I love the Lord, so I guess I'll just serve him over here. Let me help you with that. The day will come when you will thank God a thousand times that you never achieved these dreams, yeah. that you never followed that path. Yeah. Someday you'll look over here and say, if I had only known, if I'd only known, I'd have run quicker to get over here yeah, and be sure. where God wanted me to be and do what God wanted me to do. We're living in the last days. Every preacher preached that when I was growing up. And you say, well, what gives you the right to preach it today? Because we're living in the last days. Uh, I don't set dates. I haven't, you know. But every time somebody sets one, I think it's a good thing. You say, I don't like it when they do that. I know you don't like it because you don't want to realize that maybe they're going to be right. You know, if somebody said the Lord was coming Friday and gave you three reasons, you know, the stars aligned and, you know, the Council on Foreign Relations and the President and the Iraqis. And I got all kind of things they can put together and all at once. Wow, that's impressive. But if they said the Lord's coming back Friday and you, you could be the naysayer, okay? And, and, and well, you know, ah, they said that. They, but one day somebody's going to get it right. Yeah, right. Amen? Yeah. And so I just chose to believe everybody. Is that okay? You say, well, why, what are you going to, it keeps you on your toes. Yeah. I mean, first thing you do in the morning, you need to get up and look through the newspapers and the magazines and listen to the radio broadcast and see if somebody has made a projection. And if you, sure as you find out, somebody said, well, the Lord's coming, or if they said it's going to be next Tuesday or the 31st or the 22nd, you say, well, don't just throw all that away because somebody's got to be right because they're getting pretty much every day. As a matter of fact, you probably could find enough to get on the hour reports. You know, he's going to come at 9 o'clock or 7 o'clock or 4.30. You don't know. Everybody's got some kind of a wild, crazy idea. And you say, well, that's garbage. Yeah, it is, except one's going to be okay. Yeah. And I don't know which one's going to be right. And so you say, well, that'd be a waste of time. Oh, no, no, no. You never waste your time accomplishing something thinking the Lord's coming. Yeah, that's good. Never that's waste good. your time. Young people, you never waste your time cleaning up your room. Okay? You may wait till mama says, either clean it or I'm going to kill you. Uh, that was my parameter usually. And uh, my mother would say, it either gets put away or it gets put into trash. That was kind of the saying around our house. You don't have to wait till you get there to clean your room. Okay? Just want to let you, this will help some of you young people too. You can clean your room anytime. Okay? And the nice thing about it is if you clean it kind of clandestinely, in other words, nobody knows you're cleaning it, when your mom kicks the door open and says, you, it's going to be a wonderful time. <laughs> she's first of all going to drop to the floor and see if she's still alive, and then she's going to get up and she's going she's to say it this way, you cleaned your room. <laughs> and that's the way a mom says it when she didn't believe it would ever happen. Yeah. And you're going to find out that your relationship is going to improve with your mom because you just kind of jumped ahead. And can I tell you, it's okay to kind of jump ahead in serving the Lord? Yeah. 
You say, well, what does that mean? I don't know if the Lord's going to call you to be a missionary to Bula Bula land. But I don't think the Lord get upset if you practiced being a missionary for the rest of the week. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. Right. Instead of going to Bula Bula land, how about just going into the classroom? Yeah, sure. Get you some gospel tracts. Yeah, That's what these missionaries do on a mission yeah. field. Get you some gospel tracts and just, you know, say, hey, I want to give you something to read. And I say, what are you doing? I'm practicing being a missionary. Yeah. I went to a missions conference this week. The preacher said God calls people to go halfway around the world and preach the gospel. And I thought maybe he might call me someday. I need to get some practice because, you know, yeah. it really scares me to do this. So thanks for taking one. And you yeah. take one. And teacher, you That's take good. one. Just yeah. go for it. Yeah. Swing for the walls, yeah. all right? Well, that's good. We're just waiting right here, timid and shy. Hoping nobody squeaks and saying, Lord, don't ask me to do that. I'll do what I can do, but Lord, don't ask me to do. And we don't do much of anything other than sit there and shiver and say, Lord, I'll do whatever you. Somewhere along the way, we need some Christians that are both. Listen, if the Lord's coming back, okay, you realize if I do something completely backward and wrong as a Christian and the Lord comes the next day, nobody's really going to pay attention to it. You know, when that trumpet sounds, all eyes will not be on me anymore. Yeah, right. yeah, that's right. yeah. You know, they may be standing there looking at me, go, what in the world has that fool done now? And then, da -da -da -da, they won't care anymore. It'll all be over. There we are in heaven. And there will be, and nobody's going to remember the dumb things or the crazy things or the wild things that I did or even the things that I did and failed at. As long as I'm swinging the bat somewhere, I may hit something. We got churches filled with people that just come to listen to the report on how the game's going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. That's what we do. We come to church and we come to missions conferences. You want to know what we, we want to know what the score is? Yeah. What's the score down there in Central America? How are we doing over in Africa? Mm -hmm. How are we doing? How are we doing over there in Russia? Are we? Boy, it looks like we might be winning that game over in Africa. And 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 we we get together and we can rejoice and we should. Mm -hmm. But how about getting in the game? How about getting in the game? Mm -hmm. I submit to you. I'm going to use myself as an example tonight. If I knew the Lord was coming tomorrow morning at 9.15, I would write a check for every dime that I have yeah. in retirement, in the bank. I mean, all $12.50. <laughs> I would write a check for everything I had and put it in the offering pan tonight. No one. They never cash the check and it never get to the mission field. But I'd want it to be in the right place. But I don't know that he's coming in the morning. And that's what kind of slows us down, doesn't it? And so maybe somewhere along the line, though, we need to say, Lord, help me not to be a fool on either side of this thing. Because it would be foolish to just drain my bank account and then find out the Lord wanted me to live another 40 years. Right. That would be a foolish thing to do. But it would also be really foolish to think I'll never survive if I give this money, so I'm not going to be able to do anything. It's foolish on both sides. Find a place and jump in and say, God, I want to be involved in this thing of missions giving to others. What a place we find over and over again in the scriptures where the Lord has encouraged us. Mark 16, 15, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said in Matthew 28, 19, these are familiar passages, but they're the verses, they're the kingpins of what we've talked about these last few days. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Go, go, go is what the Lord told the disciples. We ought to be busy, involved in that thing. You say, preacher, you've said that already this week. I know what I'm leaving tomorrow, so I want to make sure you got the yeah, message, yeah. all right? Yeah. Uh, uh, these missionaries are going to be out of here and gone. You're going to forget their names. You're going to find their prayer card three weeks from now tucked in your Bible somewhere, somewhere you thought you are going to pray for them every day, and then you forgot where the card was. That's tremendous Christians that we are, dedicated and sincere. Yeah. And, but I'm just trying to remind you, my fear, my worry is that I might forget these truths myself. My fear is that you and I together might forget some of these possibilities and opportunities to get the gospel around the world. Somebody, someday, is going to lead somebody to Christ. 
that you won't even realize, maybe never know the name, maybe never know anything about them, maybe a distance of millions or hundreds and thousands of miles somewhere in there, and it won't be told until we get to heaven. But what a story when the Lord begins to put together the stories. And you're going to find that because you did this, then this guy had the opportunity to do this. Or maybe this guy, rather than using an opportunity, took some of that money and took care of this guy that you didn't even know. But you understand it just keeps going and going and going and going. You say, well, preacher, I've never accomplished much for the Lord. You might be amazed one day at the judgment seat of Christ to find out exactly what you've accomplished. I look at a lot of gray heads sitting out there, and I'm one of you now. <laughs> I look at a lot of people, listen, getting up and going fast just doesn't work for me anymore. Uh, I need a jump start and, you know, maybe some ethanol sprayed down in the carburetor, some of that stuff to get me going. Uh, I understand that all too well. I, I can't go as fast as I used to could go. Can't go as long as I used to could go. But I realize this, it doesn't t it's not endurance now, it's just participation. It's not endurance now and it's not talent. It's just participation in the things of God. Every major league all-star in whatever sport you want to take started out as a little kid just doing whatever he could. Every, every baseball star that ever was that knocked the ball out of the park started striking out. And they just started. And I'll be honest with you, I'll guarantee you that probably 9 out of 10 and maybe a 99 out of 100 never dreamed they'd get to the big leagues. You say, well, because you didn't have that guarantee. Nobody walks up and says, hey, take this basketball and throw it at that hoop, and if you do, I'll make you an NBA star. It doesn't work that way. So they take the ball, and they throw it, and they, it just lands right there. And Then they pick it up, and then they try to dribble, you know, and they hit it twice, and it rolls off in the ditch. You know how it works. They pick up the softball, the baseball, and the guy's running home, and they throw it to third. And it's supposed to go home, but it didn't go there. Or they swing the bat, and instead of striking out, they let it go and hit the pitcher and break his leg. And uh, there are all kind of, all kind. Aren't there thousands of funny stories wrapped up? You watch it on television. Little kids, and sometimes grown adults acting like little kids, but it's always doing stupid things, isn't it? And yet we set back, and the thing that keeps us from reaching the world is the fear we might look stupid. Yeah. That's our fear. People making thousands of dollars on YouTube, advertising people doing stupid things. You say, well, I don't want anybody to laugh at me. Well, you'll never get a dime off of YouTube. <laughs> if you're going to make any money on YouTube, you've got to be half fool and half moron. That's the only way it ever works. Somebody either on there going, that is the craziest thing I've ever seen, or you saying, what kind of a nut is that? That's the only way you get on there. And yet we spend our time watching them and laughing and saying, Man, that guy's really good. No, he's really dumb. That's how he got on there. And somehow we're afraid if somebody sees me pass out a gospel track, they'll think I'm really dumb. They'll think I'm just a moron. They'll think I'm just crazy. Don't you understand moron and crazy's in in this day and time? The more moronic you are, the better off you are. You may even get on YouTube if you pass out enough tracks. Go for it. Swing for the walls. Recognize. The Lord said, go ye into all the world. Don't you know that when he stood there before those disciples and told them, go into all the world, they couldn't have named every country that existed if their lives depended on it? They couldn't have walked to get where they needed if their lives. He gave them an absolutely unattainable, impossible task. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You say, well, what did they do? I'll tell you what they did. They started. They started. They hit the ground running. They didn't look out there and go, well, that's too far. They didn't look out there and go, well, I can never get there. I mean, for crying out loud, I got a couple people next door, but I can't. They, they never worried about the boundaries out there. They just started the process. Just starting the process. Get involved in missions. Be a part. Say, by the grace of God, I don't have $2, but I'm going to give $2 to go to the mission field. I know that may not get very far. Well, you know, last time I looked, $2 would pay for about 25 tracks. 
And who knows if those 25 tracks would be picked up in some foreign language that you wouldn't even understand, end up halfway around the world in Bula Bula land with the Bula Bula land missionary, and he pick it up and say, I'm sure thankful somebody sent me these gospel tracks and take that Bula Bula knees track down there to a Bula Bula man living in a Bula Bula house and handing him a gospel track and that fellow saying, I don't know what this is, and putting it on the shelf somewhere. And four years later, when his world fell apart, he picked up that old track and he began to open it and the tears began to flow down his face and all at once he's shouting it out running around his tent or wherever he lives thanking God not even knowing where he got it from not even remembering who gave it to him and this poor guy back here done left gone home discouraged because God not blessing him it's all over with and yet here it is here's a seed that's bringing forth fruit we, just, we need to just get excited about possibilities Boy, they're, they're playing everybody, we're going to the moon again aren't you happy about that well, you know, the last time we went to the moon, don't you remember how the world changed? Oh, it just got so much better. Old Neil stepped down there and said, that's one small step for mankind. Well, you know, it was only about five, four, five inches. <laughs> kind of made me worry about old Neil. That's a giant leap. Here we go. When, they, when he got down there, they, they set foot out there. All they left up there was a bunch of footprints and some junk. Yeah. Yeah. And when he got home, all they brought was a bunch of junk. What a great accomplishment. One small step for mankind. One small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. There we are. Why don't you take one small step for God? One small step for God. Why don't you just say, Lord, my comfort zone ends right here. And mine does too. Can I be honest with you? I like preaching up here because you're there. And there's some pretty sturdy wooden objects between me and you, and I can get out the door if I have to. Any good soldier plans his egress route. And I know I got, I got a couple of hymn books here I could throw just to distract you so I could get out and get going. You say, that's my mind. just works that way. Just crazy. What about you just putting all that stuff aside for a minute saying, God, look, I'm just, I'm just going to jump off the diving board here. I'm just going to give it my best. I'm just going to, why not next Tuesday? Just how about marking a day on your calendar? And saying by the grace, and if you're a little shy, make it a couple weeks out. Lord, if you let me live to this day, I'm going to take 10 tracks. And by the grace of God, on this day, not on tomorrow, don't ask me tomorrow. When I get out there to this day on the calendar, I'm going to pass those 10 gospel tracks out. I like to wait, kind of see if I can hear the corn growing. It's amazing. We make all kind of promises but never intend to carry through on them. And so when we do that, we can make grandiose promises. It's like, Lord, I love you. I'm going to pass out a million tracks this year. You know you're not going to pass out a million tracks. And so it doesn't disappoint you when you don't pass out any. It was an unobtainable goal in the first place. How about this? Lord, by the grace of God, I'm off next Tuesday. I don't have to work. And Lord, if you let me live till next Tuesday, I got one. I got two gospel tracks here. I'm going to go down to Starbucks and get me a coffee. And Lord, I'm going to give one to the first person that waits on me at the window. And I'm going to give one to the person that's right behind me. Now, let me help you. You'd be just as scared as if you promised to pass out a thousand. But it's much easier to obtain that goal than it is the impossible ones we set that give us an excuse for doing nothing. Set a goal for yourself that can be accomplished. Lord, I, listen, you're not going to win your whole town to Christ next Tuesday on visitation. But you could be a witness to somebody. You could be a witness to somebody. I mean, you can make it fun. Lord, <laughs> I'm going into the gas station here, and the first person I see, I'm going to give a gospel track to. You don't even have to know them. You can make it fun eventually. And what you'll do more than anything else is muster up some courage. And if you keep mustering up some courage, at some point you may give the king of England a sword. Hmm? I remember that gal walking around and she just was in agony everywhere she turned. As a pastor, I thought, how do I tell them? There's no point in you planning on going to the mission field. There was thought that she might not even be able to move when they took the halo off. 
injured that severely. Why didn't I just set him down and say, look, <laughs> why don't you just fit in here at your local church and teach some Sunday school and do some of that stuff because I'm glad I didn't. I must confess I was tempted. I was tempted. No pastor wants to see their people hurt. No pastor wants to see their people fail abysmally. No pastor wants to put their people in a position where they'll never achieve what they wanted to achieve for God. You say, what'd you do? I didn't say anything. Why? Because I didn't know what to say and I didn't know what God could do. And all at once, they said the halo's going to come off. We're not sure yet, but we're going to take the halo off. And they took that great big metal thing with the rod sticking up in the air. They took that collar off, and she could barely move. Scar, where they'd operated, tried to put things straight. And then before long, she was able to come with a neck brace on. And then they were coming to church, and she was able to shake hands, get in and get out. And then the brace was gone. And, but I never really thought that. But all at once, they said, it's time for us to get back on deputation. We're going to Scotland. That's where God called us. And I, being a good pastor, said, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. Because if I tell them to go, they're going to get, she's going to have a, and die, and it'll be my fault. If I tell them not to go, they're going to be mad, and so I'm just going to step back. And I did. I was saying a coward does. I said, Lord, you help them make the right decision. Amen. And they packed up, and they headed for Scotland. And now they got a little church meeting in the upper room of some office building, and they probably got eight or nine people coming. And Brother Dane told me, he said, you know, when I got to Scotland, I found out that they don't even go to any church. Church is out of the picture in Scotland. People don't, I mean, even heathen don't go to the, whatever the churches are. He said, I found two things in, when I was in Scotland. He said, I found that when you preach on the street, they'll come and they'll make fun of you. And they'll ridicule you and they'll laugh. But not because you're preaching the gospel, but because that's what they've always done. That's the Scottish way. To make fun of whoever's doing something that you don't like. And he said, and I found out secondly, if you keep doing it long enough, the faces start to get familiar. Because they keep coming back. And they know you're going to be there at 1030 tomorrow. And he said, all at once I realized I couldn't get a congregation to meet in the room but I got a congregation standing out there, people that had been there four or five times standing and listening. And then they started to ask questions. You say, what is that? That's God taking the impossible and kind of pulling the threads out here and fixing it and stitching it up and putting it back together so that all at once something that you'd have said is not worth anything can hand the sword to the king of England and give him a gospel track, and he took it and put it in his pocket. You say, what does that mean? I don't know, but I'll tell you what I hope it means. I hope it means that somewhere Charlie got alone and somehow looked at all the responsibilities of being king of the British Empire and said, you know what, I don't know what to do, and realized that England had a reputation for having a kind of close relationship with God at one time. And I, maybe he began to wonder. This is just, this is Rick Siles version, all right? I, I, I think he just kind of began to wonder, you know, we used to have a pretty good relationship with God. And maybe the Lord just reminded him, you know, you, you stuck that thing in your pocket there. You just wear that for big occasions. And it's, I just think, it, you forgive me, I could be completely wrong. Wouldn't it be a thing if old Charlie just came to the end of his rope and said, I don't know, and stuck his hand in his pocket and there's a gospel track that that sword guy gave me way back up yonder in Scotland. And you know what's on the track? It's the story of his wife going through a car accident and God allowing her to continue to serve the Lord because she loved the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the gospel track. Now, I don't know. You say, well, you just tell it. Listen, we only tell fairy tales because we hope that someday they might come true. So let me give you a Christian fairy tale. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Charlie got up somewhere in the next week or so and before he could say some of his royal words, the tears begin to well up in his eyes. Yeah. 
And he said to the people of England, he's been given the governance over. Something happened to me last night. I'm going to lead my country back to the God that once owned this land and ruled in this land. You say, oh, it'll never happen. I never would have believed a gal that got her neck broken three or four places would be able to write a gospel track about her event that would end up in the hands of the King of England. But it did. But it did. You know what? I never imagined that some of that little money I put in the pan might end up buying some gospel tracks or feeding a missionary's family that somewhere halfway around the world read a, led, a, led a witch doctor to Christ or saw a young lady get saved that would have been a woman of ill repute or took somebody and rescued their... I, I never would imagine that that little bit of money I put in could have accomplished what undoubtedly it has accomplished in the world in which we live. I read those missions letters and sometimes they say we had three people get saved down on the street this week. We had two people walk the aisle in the church. I can't prove to you that my money was responsible for those people getting saved. But I've got to believe i got to part it yeah. somewhere. <laughs> i got to believe it somewhere. If, if Maybe I only got credit for a penny. Somewhere am I putting that money in there. Maybe all the rest of it went to buying McDonald's for the kids. And that's all right. But maybe the Lord say, you know, I did the math and... I hate to disappoint you, but they spent $1.99 on Big Mac. But that penny that was left, you know what he did? He, he spent that with some other pennies and bought some gospel tracts, and that's the one he gave to Charlie. And the king got saved. I, that's, I'll take that. I'm in. I'm okay. Just get involved with what God can do and let him use you in a way that you can't imagine what the outcome is going to be. This is a good church. I love your pastor and his family. I love this church. I really do. I like being here. I feel like I'm at home. Don't tell people up north that. (laughs) Because people up north are not supposed to think that way. But I'm just a little bit down inside Tennessee, Kentucky, you know, West Virginia, North Carolina. that's, That's my route. I enjoy it. But my hope is not to find a place to fit in not to find my people, my pals, my yeah, chums. Right. He didn't come for that. Yeah, amen. I love your pastor. love fellowshipping with him and his family. But, you know, I, that's not what I came for. Yeah, amen. I came praying God would help me stir yeah, some amen. hearts. Stir some hearts of some young people sitting out here. Boys and girls that are in teenage years. Wondering what they're going to do with their life and where they're going to go. Maybe planning on college or going here or going there or doing that. And. Nothing wrong with any of that, but they've never considered maybe giving God first choice. Maybe saying, God, I'd like to be a lawyer. I'd like to be a soldier. I'd I'd like to have my own business. That's what my goal would be. But what I just want you to know, I remember the day I did this. I have my plans. But whatever you want, I'm willing to take my plans and put them over here. And, I'm, and the Lord knows in my heart when I said it, I didn't want to mean it. Yes. I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. Amen. And when he called me to preach, to be honest with you, I felt like he betrayed me. Because it wasn't what I wanted to do. But that was a long time ago, far, far away, a long time ago in another galaxy. <laughs> and now I look back over the life that God has allowed me to live the family that he's given me, the wife he's given me, the friends among God's people he's given me, the opportunity to see some people get saved and to see some preachers get called and some missionaries go to the mission field. And if God said right now tonight, listen, (laughs) you didn't know it, but I got a button. See this dial? I'm going to roll you all the way back to teenage years and I'm going to give you what you want. Can I tell you what I tell him? You don't have to. I already had it. Already had it. And didn't know. Didn't know. Young people, let God dictate the course of your life. Never be afraid to follow him. If he takes you to Bula Bula land, go. Never be afraid to say yes to him. Always say no to what the world wants and its influence to you. You say, well, you just want me to be one of them Christians. Go to churches. No. I want you to be able to enjoy looking back as much as I do and say, my life has been absolutely phenomenal. 
have 14 grandchildren, have a great-grandchild on the way, have three children of our own, and every Sunday morning, I don't know a lot, but I know this, they're all in church, serving the Lord in Bible-believing churches. Pastor not long ago down in Texas told me, he said, your son's one of my best friends. That's something, isn't it? Yeah. That's something. I just remember that little kid that kept getting in junk and I had to whoop him and make him. And a good pastor told me, he said, he's been a good friend to me. Wow, what a blessing. Yes, sir. My two daughters are married to preachers. I don't know. That just, we just kind of messed the whole family up. I'm not bragging. Please don't think right. that. I am not right. trying to say, look at my life. Yeah. What I am saying is, thanks be to God, right. you don't have to be afraid to follow his yeah. plan, yeah. to go his You're direction, right. to say, here am I, Lord, right. send me. Here's my wallet. Use me. Here's my time. Take right. it. I'll give it. I volunteer. Yes. I like the guy one time in the military that the guys were out on the parade ground and the sergeant called him to attention and he said, I'm going to ask, and all at once when he said that, somebody stepped to the front of the line. He said, what are you doing? He said, I didn't ask you for anything. He said, I know you're going to ask us for something. I'm volunteering ahead of time. He said, why would you do that? He said, because if I listen to you, I won't want to do it, but I know I'm going to have to anyway. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, we need to be that kind of soldier for the Lord Jesus Christ. We need that, they, that kind of mama and that kind of daddy and that kind of son and that kind of daughter and that kind of grandma and that kind of grandpa. At, we need to be that kind of person. If nothing else, maybe me stepping forward will be an encouragement to my child or to your child or to your teenager to take a step and say, I'll go too. No telling what the Lord's plans are. I've always known what the Lord's plans were. They're to come back tomorrow or today but I've been wrong so many times I quit trying to guess what the Lord's going to do but looking back I look at all the times I failed because the Lord didn't come here and 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 I think boy how dumb could I be so dumb that I pastored a church for 40 years so dumb that I helped hundreds of missionaries get to the mission field so dumb that there's eight or nine guys pastoring churches today that grew up in our ministry. So dumb that I've been able to be a friend to people and seen God do wonderful things. So dumb. How dumb could I be? Wasted my whole life. Could I tell you if you're going to waste your life, I can't recommend a better way to waste your life than serving God. Because if I'm thankful for anything tonight, I'm thankful God didn't let me have my way. I'm thankful that he hedged me in and he cornered me and I went his way. Reluctantly, sometimes angry, but I went. And if I had to make that same decision tonight knowing what I know, there would be no hesitation. I'd say, Lord, let's go. Let's get it going. Can I tell you tonight, church, church is not something we do just to kind of get rid of our aches and pains. Church is not something we do because everybody depends on us, and if I wasn't there, you know, they just... Church isn't something we do to make the preacher happy or to make our husband or our wife happy. Church isn't something we do so our grandkids will follow. It's, it's not all of those, but all of those things can happen as a result of what we do for the Lord. What we do, we do for the Lord. And when we do what the Lord would have us to do, it's not just about me, and being, me being happy. And I submit to you the Christian life is a life that flows in every direction. And he said it this way, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I think the Christian life for a happy Christian that walks with the Lord and serves the Lord is a life that affects anybody that comes in contact with it. I hope my life, and I worry sometimes, I hope my life has never been a detriment to somebody's walk with the Lord. But I don't just stop with that. As long as I didn't get anybody in trouble, I'm okay. I hope my life has been an encouragement yes, to somebody. Yes, to somebody to say, you know what, I can do better and I can go further. And if he can do that, surely I can do that. Yes. He seemed to love the Lord. I'm going to give it a shot. If Oh, if I could just say that somewhere along the line, I will be most thankful. As a church, I'm thankful for you being here tonight. 
as a church and a pastor, I'm thankful for your appreciation for missions and your desire to help people get to the mission field. And I think it's a wonderful thing that you're doing here. God's blessing. I can tell from the music. I can tell from the way people interact with each other. This is a good church. Is it all right for me to tell you that? You've got a good place to be, but it's not just a place to be. It's a jumping off place. So let me encourage you. Use this place. Thank God for this place. Enjoy this place, but jump off because it's a jumping off place. Get out there and find somewhere in this world where you can make a difference and walk out that door, say, thank you, Lord, for the church I have, for the friends I have, for the pastor I have. Thank you for the Bible in my hand. Hallelujah. And don't go home, put it on the shelf, and sit down and watch gun smoke. Yeah. Say, I'm going to go jump off here somewhere this week Amen. and do something with all this good stuff God's done for me. Would you bow your heads tonight just for a minute? Thank you for allowing my wife and I to be here with you. We enjoy the fellowship. Iron sharpens iron. And I'm pretty dull most of the time, and I appreciate the fact that I can go somewhere and somebody has a good impact in my life. I'm thankful for what you've done, for, thankful for familiar faces. Some of you, I don't know, I know all your names, but I know most of your faces. I've seen you here before. And I'm thankful to God that you love the Lord enough to be consistent and to continue. But can I just nudge you a little bit tonight? Is that all right? Can I just nudge you a little bit and say, listen, Somewhere between here and the gates of pearl. Stretch yourself out a little bit and say, I'm going to just go out on a limb here. God, help me to do something that when I've been there 10,000 years, bright, shining as the sun, give me one thing in my Christian life, Lord, that I can look back and realize I have no less days to sing God's praise than when I first begun. Do something. Preacher, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I have the ability. I know you don't. None of us do. But I promise you, he does. And he has the ability to take the least of us. He has the ability to take the one who is impossible to do anything with. And God has the ability to use us. Just a little gospel track about a young lady that nearly lost her life who spent months and months and months in a halo hoping she'd be able to even walk and talk again got a testimony in the hands of the king of England you say how do you do that you don't you don't <laughs> God does God does and I submit to you tonight are you listening God has some plans for you God has some chores for you and if you're just willing and walk with him you'll find your life will count for more than you ever imagined it could because he's the one that takes control preacher Lay yourself on the altar and say, God, whatever you want, I'm yours. Come on. Willingness. Give him your life. You will never regret it. I guarantee you one thing. If you can't give it to him in here, you won't give it to him out there. Does God have your life? Great message tonight. Let's jump off and follow the Lord. Maybe right there where you're at, tell him. Whatever you want, Lord, whatever you want. You will not regret it. No way. What great things God could do with a willing heart. Amen. All righty, man. Pray that you mind the Lord tonight. Amen. Does anybody need a faith promise card? We're about to take them off. Amen. <laughs>